so we have to see how our underdamped response is going to be right so uh, the value of c of s you got in the previous uh, i have asked you to note down the c of s right so we don't have sufficient space on the board here so what is c of s you got c of s is is equal to 1 upon s minus s plus 2 zeta omega n divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n into s plus omega n square is it clear you got this or not you got c of s to be uh, 1 by s minus s plus 2 zeta omega n into uh, 2 zeta omega n upon s square plus 2 zeta omega n into s plus omega n square right so see here what are the roots in the case of underdamped response? Underdamped response means 0 less than, zeta less than 1. What are the roots? S is equal to minus zeta omega n plus or minus j times of omega t. j times of omega t. Right? So please always remember this formula omega t is, is equal to omega t is, is equal to omega n you are you are going to use it very widely omega n under root 1 minus zeta square what is this called as this is called as damped frequency of oscillations damped frequency right so this uh, you can write this as right you can factorize this into its factors right therefore c of s is is equal to 1 by s minus s plus zeta omega n divided by its first factor s plus zeta omega n see if i have two roots for a quadratic equation let us say uh, a x square plus b x plus c is equal to zero this is a quadratic equation if i have two roots of it right so x plus x1 multiplied by x plus y1 which sorry x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2 let us say is equal to 0 this is how i write uh, any uh, any equation in its factorized form right so this is the factorized form of any particular quadratic equation right so the same way i am writing this i am calling these roots as a and b let us say I am writing this as its factors s minus a multiplied by s minus b right so s minus of minus zeta omega n plus j omega t s minus of minus zeta omega n minus j omega t so if at all you multiply its factors you will get s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega t squared See s plus 2 zeta omega n, I can split as s plus zeta omega n plus zeta omega n, right? So minus s minus 2 zeta omega n can be split into minus s minus zeta omega n minus zeta omega n, right? So I am just splitting it in this way s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega t squared. Uh, there is nothing else here. See, I am just writing this quadratic equation into its factorized form. I have its roots, right? So, roots are A and B, let us say. Right? How will I write its factorized form? S minus A into S minus B. The same way, the two roots I have are minus zeta omega n plus j omega d, minus zeta omega n minus j omega d. Right? So, S minus of minus zeta omega n plus j omega d s minus of minus zeta omega n uh, plus sorry one is plus the other is minus so if we multiply those two factors you will get this s plus zeta omega n whole square plus j omega d uh, sorry minus j omega d whole square a square minus b square right so the same way you will get this so i am just expanding this i have just considered it to be uh, zeta omega n separate and uh, zeta omega n separate. I have just split it, uh, this uh, 2 zeta omega n into two different parts of zeta omega n. Right? So, see here. So, let us proceed to the next step now. This will be is equal to what? This will be, this will be exactly is equal to 1 upon s 
minus C L. You can write zeta omega n as cos theta. Yes or no? Zeta omega n is what? It is nothing but cos theta. Zeta omega n is nothing but cos theta. If zeta omega n is cos theta, what about 1 minus zeta square? 1 minus cos square theta. That is sin theta. Right? Under root 1 minus cos square theta, that will be sin theta. So, what I am doing is, I am just multiplying the numerator and denominator by under root 1 minus zeta uh, under root 1 minus zeta square. Right? I am multiplying the numerator with under root 1 minus zeta square and I am multiplying the denominator with under root 1 minus zeta square. Is it clear? Right? So, omega n under root 1 minus zeta square, what is this? This can be written as omega d, yes or no? Omega n under root 1 minus zeta square is nothing but omega d, yes or no? Clear, right? Yes. So, it is 1 by s, right? s plus zeta omega n upon s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square minus zeta means cos theta divided by under root 1 minus zeta square if zeta is equal to cos theta if zeta is equal to cos theta under root 1 minus zeta square is equal to what sin theta under root 1 minus cos square theta is sin theta therefore this is sin theta multiplied by omega d divided by s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square, right? This is what we get. So now you may understand why I have done all this, right? In order to obtain its inverse Laplace, right? C of t is what? C of t is inverse Laplace transform of C of s. So in order to obtain C of t, I have done all this, right? So just obtain the inverse Laplace transform for this. Inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s, let us call it is 1. Let us say it is 1. We will take u of t to be common, right? So, 1 minus, what is the inverse Laplace transform of this? S plus A divided by S plus A whole square plus omega omega square. What is the inverse Laplace transform of this? Using frequency shifting, what we have learned, right? So, E power minus zeta omega n t cos omega dt, right? Minus cos theta divided by sin theta omega d by s plus zeta omega n whole square plus omega d square right this is nothing but e power minus zeta omega n t sin omega d t right so this is what we will get so i just want to simplify this into a single expression right so if at all we simplify this what will we get see here just take sin theta as LCM, you will get and take this e power minus zeta omega n to be common out of this. It is e power minus zeta omega n t divided by sin theta multiplied by cos omega dt. See, I am taking this minus to be common out of these two, right? Plus sin omega dt. So, it is sin a plus b. Therefore, you will get 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n t divided by sin theta sin omega d t sin omega d t plus theta right so in in from your transfer function you don't have uh, sin theta directly so we'll write the response in all the terms containing transfer function only right so, uh, I forgot to write u of t here, this multiplied by u of t, as well as this multiplied by u of t, right? So, this will also be multiplied by what? u of t. Therefore, I am writing c of t separately here. Please take a note of this. This is very much important, right? c of t is, is equal to 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n into t divided by sin theta means what is sin theta sin theta is under root 1 minus zeta square sin theta is under root 1 minus zeta square this multiplied by sin omega dt plus theta 
sin omega dt plus theta. So this is the response of your standard second order system. Uh, a step input under under damped. Is this clear, everyone? So ye response yaad rahega. Can you remember this particular response? This will be useful for your gate examinations, right? See, so it is very simple. 1 minus e power minus zeta omega n upon under root 1 minus zeta square sin omega dt plus theta. That's it. So this is very, very, very important. Very, very important. Very much important. So just in this section, you will have a set of some formulas. That's it. What is the initial value of your response at t is equal to 0? When time t is equal to 0, what is the initial value? t is equal to 0, 1 minus e power 0, this is 1, right, sin 0 plus theta, right, so you might be having a doubt, it is 1 minus e power 0, sin 0 plus theta means it is sin theta not, uh, not 0, right, so not 1, therefore under root 1 minus zeta square, what is under root 1 minus zeta square? Under root 1 minus zeta square is sin theta, right? So what happens is basically this sin theta and sin theta cancels. You will be left with 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is nothing but 0, right? Your response starts at 0. So see here. So we are plotting C of t with respect to time. C of t with respect to time like this, right? So what is the final value? As t approaches infinity, what is the value of the response? Can anyone tell me? If you put t is equal to infinity in this e power minus infinity, that is 0, 1 minus 0, right? Whatever the, this might be, this, this always oscillates between 1 and minus 1, right? Therefore, so t minus 0 will be, it is 1, right? Therefore, the final value is going to be 1. Therefore, the response will be something like this. See here, it is, it is starting at t is equal to 0. It is starting at t is equal to 0 and finally it is reaching 1, right? But in between what is happening, right? In between what is happening is, see here, this is oscillating with some frequency omega t. This is a sinusoid oscillating at some frequency omega d, right? Which is multiplied by e power minus zeta omega n, right? So e power minus zeta omega n t. e power minus zeta omega n t is some exponentially decaying profile, right? So, this is an oscillating profile with some exponential envelope, right? These exponential envelopes and all you will see in communication systems very much, right? So, this will have an exponential envelope like this. So, with this envelope, so this envelope is because of what? This envelope is because of e power minus zeta omega and t, right? So within this envelope, this will start at 0 and within this envelope, this will oscillate like this and finally this will go to its response, uh, final value that is 1. So this is the response, this is how the response is going to be, right? So at t is equal to 0, it starts at 0, right? L slowly, it, it becomes is equal to 1. So this is the response. So can you people remember the expression for this response? This exp Remembering this expression is important. Can you people remember this? This expression. This is useful in many problems. Is it clear? So from this, from this we can give a certain uh, number of parameters. Right? See, the first parameter we can say is rise time. Right? Rise time. Rise time is C from 0 to 100. This is 100% of output. Reaching 1 means it is reaching 100% of output. For the time taken by the response to reach from 0 to 100. So this particular time is called as T suffix R rise time. Right? So rise time T R rise time T R is given by T R is equal to T R is equal to pi minus theta by omega D. This is called as rise time. So the expression for rise time is this. Whereas the definition for rise time varies according to the system. Right? So if your system is 
an under damped system, then the rise time is different. If your system is an over damped uh, over damped system, then the rise time is different. And if your response is a critically damped response, then the rise time is defined to be in a different manner, right? So please take down the value, uh, take down the definition of rise time here. Rise time is defined as rise time is the time taken by the response, the time taken by the response to reach to reach from case one, case one in first case from zero to hundred percent, zero to hundred percent of final value in under damped under damped case under damped response. It is the time taken to reach from five percent to ninety five percent of final value in critically damped response. Right, it is the time taken to reach from 10% from 10% to 90% of final value in over damped response. Over damped response. Right. So this is it. Right. It is uh, rise time is <coughs> the time taken the time taken by the response the time taken by the response to reach from 0% to 100% of final value in under damped response. It is 5% to 95% of final value in over damped response and 10% to 90% of the final value in the case of, in the case of what? In the case of, sorry, over, over damped response. Whereas in the case of critically damped response, it is the time taken by the response to reach from 5% to 95% of the final value. Uh, see, this TR rise time which are we are using that is a figure of merit uh, which describes how fast your system might reach your output right so in the case of undamped response the system will never reach its output right that is the reason why we are not calculating TR in the case of undamped systems is it clear right so this is one figure of merit and in the case of underdamped response this this is the formula for rise time this is valid only for under damped systems only please note it right so don't apply this for over damped systems or somewhere right so you might be you might have seen all the three different formulas you might have seen rise time as all the three different formulas but you might be in a confusion at what time we should apply what formula right so rise time is different uh, is different for different types of responses right is it clear so let us look at one more parameter called as delay time, delay time, T suffix D or else T suffix D. See here, delay time is nothing but the time at which the response has reached to 50%, right? The time at which res response has reached to 50%. Please note down the definition TD, delay time, delay time is defined as the time taken by the response to reach 50% of its final value. So there is also a formula for TD that is 0 0.7 zeta, 0 0.7 zeta plus 1 divided by omega n. So don't worry, till now we didn't get any, uh, any gate question based on this formula. You just had to memorize it, but till now we didn't get any question based on this. Okay, it is TD is equal to 0 0.7 zeta plus 1 divided by omega n.